The last virus I want to talk about is, is hepatitis B, uh, which is an envelope <laughs> virus. It has a core, an icosahedral core, that contains this unusual double-stranded DNA genome. Remember, it's gapped. It has a protein stuck on it and a piece of RNA. And today we're going to find out why it's such a weird genome. This virus encodes a reverse transcriptase. When it infects cells, binds to a receptor, the core gets into the cytoplasm, and then the viral DNA goes in the nucleus, where it's repaired. It's made fully double-stranded. The RNA and the protein are taken off. This is probably done by host cell repair enzymes. Now in the nucleus, it's a double-stranded, covalently closed circular DNA. It can be transcribed by host polymerase II. And there you make genomes, uh, you make mRNAs, and these are exported in the cytoplasm, which give rise to viral proteins. One of the proteins that's made is a reverse transcriptase. And it takes the full length uh, mRNAs, which are called pregenome, it encapsidates them, <clears throat> and these uh, subviral capsids have a reverse transcriptase in them. It now makes a double stranded DNA within the capsid. So you could look at this as a retrovirus, which can't wait to get out of the cell to start doing reverse transcription. That's what's happening. Because right here, it's packaged an RNA genome, right, with a reverse transcriptase. And a retrovirus would then be thrown from the cell and wait to reverse transcribe until the next cell. But Hep B starts to reverse transcribe right away so that the DNA, the particles that are released, have DNA in them instead of RNA. Note, there's no integration in this life cycle, right? The virus gets in, this, this DNA remains episomal, mRNAs are made, and new DNAs are immediately packaged. So this is all done by reverse transcriptase. And as you might guess, it's got a similar priming strategy as retroviruses, except the Hep B don't use tRNAs as primers. They use, double, they use uh, stem loop structures within the genome to prime their reverse transcription. So here is the pre-genome RNA. So this is one of the mRNAs made by transcription of the DNA in the host cell nucleus. This has these interesting structures, which are going to be primers uh, for reverse transcription. Now we start on the upper left. This is the viral pre-RNA. Remember, this is in this, first it's in the cytoplasm. Then it goes, it gets packaged into a subviral particle along with reverse transcriptase, and then the RT starts to copy it. And what it does is uses a primer uh, that is attached to the reverse transcriptase. So reverse transcriptase is called P. It has a little piece of, of uh, DNA on it that serves as a primer. And it hybridizes to the RNA up here in this DR1 region. So you can see this is slightly reminiscent of reverse transcription in retroviruses. You're doing a template jump right there. Uh, the virus then the polymerase, again, P is the reverse transcriptase. It's making uh, a DNA copy of the genome. As it goes along, it digests away so that you end up with a, a uh, minus strand DNA copy of the plus strand pre-genome RNA. Remember, this is happening in virions. Okay, so again, priming across the strands by this reverse transcriptase bound to this structure, extension all the way around. And that brings us here, and then there's a primer on the other strand, which was this piece of RNA never left, uh, and this will jump strands from DR1 to DR2 and begin copying to the P protein, to the reverse transcriptase, and then it goes beyond that. It gets to this point, which you can see is a single negative strand with a partial uh, positive strand DNA copy. This DNA, the plus strand, only went from this primer to the end here and didn't go very far. And that gives you this uh, DNA, which is in the virion. It's gapped. You can see why it's never completely double-stranded. It's got a protein attached. That protein is the reverse transcriptase. And it's got the primer left on. That's what that primer is right here. Never got rid of it. And we don't know why this is. I think that in the virion, the enzyme runs out of triphosphates because eventually the membrane excludes triphosphates. And so it can't complete the double strand. So you end up with a partially uh, double-stranded molecule, which will get repaired when it goes into the next cell. What, what's the story with Hep B and retroviruses? Well, it turns out there are other viruses very much like these that help to fill the gaps. So here's hepatitis B virus. 
And on this picture, what I've boxed is the genome that's in the virion. So the hep hepatinoviruses, hepatitis B, they reverse transcribe a pre-genome RNA, which is originally packaged, remember, but what's ending up in the virion is DNA because the reverse transcriptase acts in the particle before it's released from the cell. It turns out that there are plant viruses that do the same thing as hepatitis B virus. They start as a pre-genome RNA made by transcription. You get a double-stranded DNA uh, eventually packaged. So two examples of this odd hep B reverse transcription strategy. Now here on the lower right, we have our retroviruses. They package, of course, RNA. And when this RNA comes in the cell, then it's made into DNA. And that integrates. So that's very different from the, the hepatinas and the colimo viruses in that these retroviruses, their genomes, integrate into the host cell. So, so far we have two differences. One, where the reverse transcription occurs. Remember, the hepatina reverse transcription occurs in the particle before it leaves the cell. The retroviruses, the reverse transcription occurs after the particle has infected a new cell. The second difference, the hepatinas and the colimo viruses uh, do not integrate whereas the retroviruses do. There is another funny group of retroviruses called foamy retroviruses. They, for all intents and purposes, look like a retrovirus. They have an RNA genome, but, and they have a reverse transcriptase. They integrate a DNA copy in the, in the cell as a provirus, but the foamy viruses package DNA. And they do so because they're just like hep B. As soon as they are assembled in a newly infected cell, you put RNA in the particle, they reverse transcribe it immediately, just like hep B does. So they're not like retroviruses because they reverse transcribe before the particles leave uh, the cell. So we think these are all evolutionarily uh, related in some way. Perhaps the uh, retroviruses and the foamy retroviruses were very old. Maybe the retroviruses are the most ancient. The foamy retroviruses represents a progression to a DNA world, and maybe the uh, hepatinoviruses and the coliomoviruses are more recent. I told you before, we all have reverse transcriptase in us, a very small amount of reverse transcriptase enzyme. It turns out that this has been active for many, many years in many, many different kinds of animals. When we sequenced the genome, what we found, not only that 8% of our genome is retroviral, you know, 20% line elements, but there were integrated pieces of other viruses which should never have been there. Uh, Rio viruses, influenza viruses, VSV, rabies virus, yellow fever virus, measles, hepatinovirus is not supposed to be there. It doesn't integrate as part of its life cycle. Parvoviruses, circoviruses. These are small pieces of these genomes, not complete pieces, and certainly not part of the life cycle of these viruses. These got there because our cells make a little RT. And if there's a viral RNA that happens to get into the nucleus by mistake, it gets reverse transcribed and it will integrate. You can date the, the time of these integrations. Most of them happened hundreds of millions of years ago in various animal species. So they seem to be accidents, yet they're still there. And the question is whether they're doing anything. I gave you an example of how a retroviral gene is still doing something after millions of years. Maybe these are as well. But I want to emphasize that these integrations, we call them unexpected endogenous viruses, because they're in the germline. They're not in somatic cells. So they're passed on to offspring. They're not part of the viral life cycle. As far as we know, none of these viruses need integration in order to replicate. Only the retroviruses need to do that.